Alright, welcome to this module uh, where we'll be doing the mechanisms uh, that's the levers, linkages, pulleys and gears. Uh, this is just an introduction uh, to lower sec uh, DNT, so it's just a purely the basic. Uh, this is actually a very large uh, topic. We have many examples and many applications, but uh, we're only just going to cover the basics. Right, so please check with the teacher if there's any questions or any areas that you thought are unclear, and then we can clarify with you. Right, so let's go. Right, uh, first thing we want to talk about is the transmission of motion. There are basically four types of motion. Uh, they can be converted from one form to another form. Uh, through the use of mechanisms. So uh, please take note that's oscillation, uh, linear, rotary and reciprocation, right? Or, or reciprocating uh, motions. Right? They can be either connected to, uh, either converted to one another uh, through the, uh, the, the, the use of mechanisms. Uh, please note the spelling of the words, uh, you have to get it correct. Uh, and you need to know how to uh, draw or sketch the, the way the motion is moving uh, from one form to the other by oxalation or linear or rotary or oxalate uh, reciprocation. Alright, reciprocating. Right, so these are the four uh, basic type of motion and they can inter be converted to one to the other. Right, so we go to levers. Uh, basically levers, uh, we have a few different class. Levers are used to lift heavy weights with the least amount of uh, effort. So basically, you can see the person on the left lift, trying to push on the lever to try to lift the load on the other side and in the center we have the fulcrum. Uh, this one is very basic knowledge, uh, I think all of you know, the longer the rod on, on, on the side where the effort is, the easier it is to lift the weight. All right. uh, the terms uh, that we, we normally use uh, in terms of levers, fulcrum is a place where the rod pivot, or we call it a pivot, load is just a scientific name for the weight, and effort is the amount of force or the the, 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 the weight, uh, the, the, the amount of effort that you need to push onto the rod in order to move the load. Right? Uh, we use levers every day in our life. We have the bicycle brakes works because uh, the effort is placed on one side and then uh, through the fulcrum and then the, the, the way the cable moves will actuate the, uh, the, the force, okay, the stopping force. Right? Of course, on the other picture, we have the simple uh, wheelbarrow, which is also a good example of levers. Right, three classes of levers. The first class, uh, basically we have the load on one side, effort on the other side, and the fulcrum is in the center. And basically, this is example of a, a, a workman using a trolley to move uh, some uh, a box or something like that. All right, the fulcrum is the wheel. Second class, the fulcrum is one side, the load is in the center, and effort is on the other side. And this is a very good example, it's the wheelbarrow, where the, the, the wheel is the fulcrum, uh, load is in the center where you carry the things and then the, the workman forces the effort on the other side. Right? The third class, uh, again simple, fulcrum on one side, effort is in the center and load is at the end. The good example of this is the, the fisherman who is using the fishing rod. Obviously, where uh, his elbows are is where the, the fulcrum is. The center part where he pulls is where the effort is and the end where the fish is, that's the load. Right, and then we come to the topic of uh, linkages. Right, linkages. Uh, what we have is a crank and a crankshaft. Right, the crank is the part that turns. All right, so if you see a door handle, is that is something like a crank. All right, and uh, the simplest device is a crank handle. And the crankshaft is basically what you see the picture there, where uh, the pedals is being applied, and that is a crankshaft. Okay. Now, a crank and slider is very simple. Uh, the crank is the rotating disc. The slider is the things that moves uh, in the reciprocating motion up and down or in and out. And the connecting rod is the one that connects the slider to the crank. And that uh, allows the, as the crank turns 180, 260 degrees, the, slide, the connecting rod is the one that connects the slider. Right? And the best example of this is a steam engine where you can see how the, the steam is inserted into the slider and the slider mechanism, the piston moves and as a result, uh, through the corking rod, the wheels turn. Right? Pulley systems, what we have is a very simple pulley system, uh, what you can see there. Uh, 
is the driver pulley and through a belt it drives the driven pulley okay uh, the pulley wheels are groove wheels so there's a slot in the center uh, and where that's where the slot is that's where the, the belt goes right and we have a key shaft is where how the shaft is actually linked to the wheel and we put a key inside to make sure that there's positive engagement between the pulley and, and the, as well as the shaft right gears and gear systems right gears are, can be found almost everywhere in any workshop or factory or any other mechanical parts can you name and describe a device with gears okay, spare a thought on that right we have many many uh, mechanical gears printer uh, we have the cameras we have uh, basically the car the wheels right the photocopy machine have many many gears inside all right so these are examples of uh, devices with gears right uh, the, the two gears you see see here are called spur gears because they mesh together uh, gear a is called the driver because it is turned by a motor and as gear a turns it meshes with gear b and it turns as well and gear b is called the driven gear right and uh, you can take note that gear a turns in the anti-clockwise direction and therefore b turns in the clockwise direction all right the details of gear this is a, this is a little bit extra uh, there's this thing called the pitch circle diameter and the root and this thing called the pitch pitch is from the distance from one gear a uh, one teeth of a gear to the other teeth right and that is uh, details there you can have a look at it uh, and uh, you can appreciate more about gears gear and gear systems right we have a good example of when we have two or more gears this is what we call a, a gear train right and if you look at gear a gear a turns in anti clockwise direction gear b will turn in clockwise direction similarly as gear b turns in clockwise direction gear c will turn in an anti clockwise direction so now look at the way the whole setup is this uh, is gear c going to revolve faster than gear a right so in this case here obviously gear c will revolve slower because there are more teeth on gear c as compared to gear a right this is another uh, example of a gear train uh, where the gear b is what we call an idler gear right so can you tell me whether gear a and gear c the speed is the same right it should be the same but what about gear a and b okay gear and b of course b will rotate faster because there's smaller number of t's okay uh, the direct note the directions of between the the of gear a and gear c they are both rotating in the same direction while gear b is rotating in the different direction all right this is how we draw gears in uh, representation we draw two little uh, circles to represent gear a and uh, then there's a meshing between gear a and b that's how you draw a gears uh, on a paper All right another form of gear uh, is this rack and pinion rack is the one that's on the bottom and it moves horizontally either in a linear way if the gear is rotating in one direction and uh, the gear in this application is called a pinion All right and uh, we have that to move uh, converting from rotary motion to linear motion okay so rack and pinion is used in the drilling machine so if the next time you come to the workshop uh, ask the teacher or go and see yourself where is that rack and pinion it's a very very useful tool to move the table up and down as you turn the crank handle right bevel gear bevel gear is a very interesting one where the axis of rotation is rotated over 90 degrees right so uh, it's rotated one is rotating this way and the other one is rotating the other way so that's uh, converting the motion through 90 degrees and as well as the gears uh, the speed of the gear the, the shafts being changed right so example of that is uh, you can see your egg beater a uh, manual egg beater or the typical hand drill that we have in the workshop right okay we come to the next one called gear wheel and chain this is uh, the bicycle chain and we have that called uh, and the wheel the gear is called a sprocket uh, and again uh, the whole thing is transmitted it's not really a belt and a pulley but rather it's a chain and a sprocket okay 
uh, worm and worm wheel and worm wheel. Uh, the worm is the one that's on top. The worm wheel is the big one that is at the bottom. Right? Uh, if you look at the picture, the worm gear is the the one that is attached to the motor, while the the yellow gear is the worm wheel. Uh, please take note that this is a very special application because the worm gear when it turns one round, the the worm wheel only rotate one T. Alright, so uh, and normally in spur gears application, the driven and the driver can be switched. But in this case here, for worm and worm wheel, the drive the driver is always the worm wheel and not the worm gear. Alright, the worm wheel. Sorry. So the worm wheel is always the one that is being driven. Alright, the worm gear is the one that is the driver. Right, so we use that in our motors and typically we also use that to transmit the, the motion through a 90 degree and to step down the speed of the uh, output. Right, so that's the end of the mechanisms. If there are any questions, uh, please uh, ask the teachers and get us in touch. Thank you so much.